Hello, Doc Sketchy here again with another fantastic video. The other day I was sitting in my, my office thinking to myself, Doc Sketchy wants a quantizer. So I, but then I decided I wanted a quantizer. I didn't want to mess around with a bunch of digital garbage. I wanted a quantizer based on analog circuitry and I wanted a quantizer that had a flash ADC. I didn't want to mess, I didn't want to wait around for my analog to digital converter to, to figure out what was what. But as we all know, flash ADC is very circuit heavy. Um, so I decided I wanted a, a 7 bit quantizer or a quantizer that would do 128 chromatic steps. Uh, if I used sledgehammer flash ADC, that would require 128 comparators, or maybe 127. Not sure. 128, I think. So if I used quad op amp chips, that would be 32 op amp chips. That's a lot of chips. So that wasn't going to work. So then I went to Wikipedia and I looked up ADC and I discovered this concept called the folding ADC. And it turns out that with the folding ADC, you only have to use uh, one comparator for each bit. So a seven bit uh, ADC requires only seven comparators. So that sounded good. So I sat down and designed one on the weekend, and I built a couple of prototypes, and the second prototype is the one we'll look at today, and it works perfectly. All right, so first I want to talk about the circuit. So here's the circuit diagram for the, for the uh, quantizer. So this is the voltage, the raw voltage that you want to quantize comes in here, and it's buffered. The reason it's buffered is because this cir these circuits really mangle, the they have variable input impedance quite low, and so they will mangle this voltage unless it's buffered. Learn that the hard way. So this is buffered, and then it immediately goes to a comparator, compared to ground, and um, into the back end of a two input XOR gate, which is all the other inputs grounded. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then it goes into this, uh, this little box which says ABC. Now, there's six of these, and these are the folders. You can also think of them as frequency doublers. So if this is a triangle wave from, say, minus 5 to plus 5 volts, each one of these will generate a triangle wave of similar magnitude, at, at, but each one will double the frequency of the triangle wave. All right? So this box with A in and B and C out is this circuit here. So here A comes in. This is a Mancini rectifier, and uh, in, with the diode placed the way it is, this will make all the voltages negative. So if you put in a ramp like this, you'll come out with a, with a triangle like that on the bottom on the, in, in negative voltages. And then this circuit here, in the original Mancini rectifier, this is just a buffer, but what it is in this circuit is a, is a, a positive amplifier with a gain of two that also lifts the voltage by five and a third volts. So this takes this, this negative triangle and makes it that, and, and makes it go over the whole voltage range again. And that comes out at B and goes to the next, goes to the next folder and on and on. But then the A, the A signal also goes into a comparator and is compared to ground. Now this comparator shows a um, thousand to one uh, hysteresis resistors. I, I used op amps for this. I didn't actually need the, hist need the hysteresis uh, resistor, so I left it off. And then the compared output, because this is this will be a plus to minus about 13 volts, um, but I'm driving a CMOS chip with it, which expects a 0 to 5 volt input. So you just have to put a fairly sizable current limiting resistor on the output of the comparator so as not to fry the, um, the protection diodes at the input of the, C of the CMOS chip. All right, so those comparators are the C outputs, and they all go to this cascade of XOR gates. So the XOR gates feed into each other, and then the comparators feed into the gates. Now, the reason we need the XOR gates is because um, these seven comparators, this one and the, seven, the six in here, so all those seven comparators generate seven-bit gray code. But you can't use gray code to drive an R2R ladder which is the DAC, the digital to analog converter. So you need to convert the gray code to normal binary code. And that's what the XOR gates do. This cascade of XOR gates converts gray code to binary code. 
and then the binary code drives an R2R ladder. Now the R2R ladder, as you know, um, converts a, a digital binary code into a, an analog voltage. So, but the great, but the uh, R2R ladder is driven by the CMOS chips, which are powered from zero, which are powered from with a 5.333 volt positive voltage. So the so this will generate a voltage cut right here, which has a range from zero to 5.333 volts. But I need it to have a range of negative 5.333 to positive 5.333. So I put it into another gain of two positive amplifier, double it with a gain of two, and then shift it. Uh, down by 5.333 volts and that so that takes the 0 to 5 volt and doubles it and drops it to a nine, minus 5 to 5 volt and so I get the full range of voltage out here so the voltage that comes out here will be the same as the voltage coming in here except quantized all right that's how it works let's have a listen to it oh before we do that though let's look at it so let's have a look at the board so here's the here, here's the circuit board and um this is the this is a five volt source, but I'm I've hooked it up through a trim pot, so it I can adjust it uh, according to the data sheet. I can adjust it between about four and six volts. This is an LM three thirty six Z five, and so I'm adjusting it to five and a third volts and buffering it here. So that's my five and a third volt source. Then then I'm inverting that with another trim pot to get a negative five and a third volt source. So this is positive and negative five and a third volts. Then these three. Quad op amps are the Mancini circuits. So each each side of the op amp pair quad is the, this pair here. So the input voltage comes in here and is buffered. So this top op amp is this buffer here. Okay. And then it feeds into the first Mancini circuit. So that's this one. So it goes the Mancini circuit, it goes uh, from here, the input goes into um, the rectifier and the buffer, then the rectifier and the buffer, then the rectifier and the buffer, then comes around, rectifier, buffer, rectifier, buffer, rectifier, buffer. Now you'll notice I put little 100p stability caps on all these circuits, and that really helped keep them nice and crisp. Okay, then uh, these, these uh, Mancini circuits feed the comparators, and so the comparator, so the, these two op amps Quads, quad op amps are the seven comparators. One of them is unused here. So there's seven comparators. And then the seven comparators generate the gray code, which goes into these two uh, quad XOR gates. And these quad XOR gates generate the binary code, which drives this R2R ladder. So here's 200K and 100K resistors uh, set up. So the, these are these are uh, 200K, these are 100K. And... Um, then from the latter, things go to this output, gain of two, level shifter, and out. Now, uh, I've used 10K resistors everywhere in the Mancini circuit, and these are just 1% 1, 1 out of the bag or whatever. But the, the, uh, these resistors over here were hand-selected to be uh, within, a, within 0.1K. Of, uh, they don't have to be 100 and 200. I think they're actually 99. 6 and 199.2. I just happen to have a lot of those particular values. So they have to be a factor of two of each other. And uh, they're very, they, they work very well. All right, let's give it a listen. Okay, so the first thing we're going to listen to is a one VCO modulated by a triangle wave that's attenuated with this, with my pot. And this is what it sounds like without the quantizer. This is what it sounds like with the quantizer. Give me a second here. Quite a range. Okay. 
Next, we're going to hear the VCO modulated by uh, sample and hold sam uh, with, no with a noise source. And again, this is unquantized. And then quantized, it's going to make all those random notes into uh, notes of the chromatic scale. So if you limit the range of that modulation, you could get random melodies. Okay, so next I'm just going to put a constant uh, a voltage into the into my potentiometer. Let's see if we can see any of this here. Um, so I've got this uh, potentiometer taped to the table here, and I'm just putting a, co a constant five volts into it. And so, um, and the other the other side is grounded. So I'll get a, I have I have a five octave range, and then I'm just going to turn the potentiometer to change the pitch of the v, of the VCO through the quantizer. So here's what that sounds like. This will. Try and play Flight of the Bumblebees. Okay, so the next. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see what happens if I take the output from the quantizer and feed it into two different VCOs and then tune those VCOs to a major third apart. So we'll get a little bit of electronic Debussy happening here. I should mention that I'm using a phase, uh, or sorry, I'm using a pulse output from each VCO and one of the VCOs is getting a slow pulse width modulation and then I'm also slowly modulating the filter that they're going through. So that's kind of cool. And finally, for completeness sake, let's see what happens when I quantize a triad, uh, three VCOs uh, tuned to a triad. It's a bit harsh with, uh, with a um, pulse wave. Let's try three triangle waves, see if it sounds any sweeter.
Anyway, there it is again. It's pretty cool. It's nothing but a bunch of op amps, a couple of quad, a couple of CD, CMOS gates. So it's a cheap circuit to build, and it works like a dream. Cheerio.